back in the shop. And on the bench is the DD3 uh, brake chamber. And I've got some parts, some kit parts to rebuild it. And a couple new diaphragms. Yeah, so it's ready to go. Well, it's ready to be cleaned up anyway. I mean, this has got a bunch of, cru um, bunch of like residue from the rubber in it. And, um, you know, some of these surfaces need to be cleaned up on the wire wheel and uh, just get all that cleaned up. So uh, that's where we're going to start is getting some parts cleaned up and, um, and then we'll put it together. Some of these parts are going to require uh, agitating with some uh, solvent before they go in the, the washing machine. The washing machine a lot of times will just uh, kind of solidify certain certain sediments and stuff into position. Um, so yeah, we're going to brush these up uh, with some solvent and then put them in the machine with a bunch of other parts and uh, they should come out pretty clean. In the disassembly video, I talked about a bulletin uh, that Bendix put out about this uh, separator. And as you can see, this one is bent around there. I don't know how well it shows in the camera. But yeah, actually it shows pretty good, but it's bent. And w when I took it apart, which this is a diaphragm that I believe is leaking. And when I took it apart, it's um, uh, if I can, it was off crooked to the side like that, and you know taking a, a look at that bulletin and what it has to say is, um, you, you don't use this with uh, this later style diaphragm, and difference being is this diaphragm here, yeah, uh, unwrap it or unfold it. The difference being this one um, it has a ridge around it and that ridge actually clips into um, a little channel right under here so this thing will sit it'll it'll push on and, and stay on there so that keeps that ri that ring keeps the uh, separator um, in the proper location. So if you if you have a diaphragm with no ridge on it, then you don't use the separator. So could that have been the downfall of this diaphragm? Is that somebody put a separator on it when it wasn't supposed to be there? I mean, the thing is, you know, in its relaxed position, it's, it's crooked. Looks like Looks like a hat my stepfather would wear. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so the thing is uh, obviously been, been working crooked its uh, entire um, life that it was in there. So that's just something you want to keep in mind. Now, another thing I, I mentioned on the disassembly is that. Um, I, when I took it apart, I said, "Ew, somebody put never sees in here." Well, I found a, a Bendix um, service data sheet about the DD3, and I was very surprised to see that the service data says to use never sees, which I don't I don't really understand because. Um, 
when I see never sees in applications like that, it tends to dry out and um, you know solidify and leave like a crusty type of um, uh, mess, I guess, uh, where it is. I mean, I think it works great on bolt threads and stuff that, that need to come apart later, but as far as being on uh, moving parts, um, I, I'm not a big fan of it. So what I did today was I called Bendix, and I spoke to one of their tech guys for a while, and he didn't have a lot of information on the DD3. He said he's been there 10 years, and and the uh, the DD3 was out of production uh, since before he's gotten there. So you know he didn't have a, like first-hand experience with it, but you know he was looking through some of the data, and he said he he sees that they they recommended using never sees, but you know he was looking at it and and said, well, you know, probably any grease um, that'll coat the metal parts to, to help protect them and um, give them a little lubrication to slide um, would work fine in there without being a, a problem. Um, and uh, my feeling is, is as long as, uh, no matter what grease it is, as long as it doesn't attack the rubber of the, the diaphragm and um, and it, and it keeps its form, um, then, then that should work. So I, I, I guess this, uh, the DD3 is not too fussy on the type of lubricant that it uses in there. So we have all our little parts here. Now, um, one of the things I noticed when, when um, you order parts for one of these, they don't really have like a full rebuild kit that is all ready assembled and ready to go. You need to specify what you want. And so the kit that I got, or the second kit I got, came in a little bit different than the first kit. Uh, it didn't come with the felts because I forgot to, uh, to mention them. But I think one of these old felts will probably be fine for allowing the um, the canister to breathe and um, even going back with one of these I'll clean it up and see which one looks looks better and smoother and that, that bushing will be fine for going back otherwise we don't really have any broken parts and um, uh, so it you know so I got the, the what MCI calls a grommet which is a real big o-ring and then another smaller o-ring that goes around the outside of this to seal in the air uh, because they were a little like d-shaped they get flattened as they heat up and cool down while they're in their position where they're supposed to seal and then once you take them out and you put them back in now it's less likely to uh, to seal or hold the pressure that it should be so yeah as soon as this stuff gets cleaned up we'll uh, we'll start putting it together All right, so this is the, uh, the apply piston um, and rod um, for the DD3. And I, I put it in the lathe here, um, trying to get this thing positioned where it's got a good view, but it's not in the way. And that's about where we are. So what I'm gonna do is is uh, turn, turn on the lathe and um, just try to polish a shaft a little bit uh, with some slightly worn 400 grit. Uh, and this is something you want to be careful. Always want to be really careful and, and always alert when um, when you got your hands in a lathe like this um, because you're not going to stop this 
if it were to catch my arm, it would twist it and break it. Probably rip it right out of the socket. So, I want to be very cautious when um, polishing something on the on the lathe. My forearm is propped off of the carriage of the lathe, so it, it gives me a little more control of um, the movements that I'm making. Yeah, if you're interested, look up uh, videos, other videos on YouTube about lathe and mill accidents and grinding wheels that that uh, come apart. Some gruesome stuff. Hate to see that happen to anybody. Just took the paper, so I guess we're gonna call it quits on that. <laughs> and take it back over to the um, parts washing tank and, and uh, clean it up. Good to have a washing machine. up. I think we're done for the night so I can shut off the heater. <clears throat> At least done cleaning things, but you now we're going to put something together. Uh, all right, well, let me get things organized and then we'll, we'll start the assembly. Okay, this is the uh, grease I like to use. It's a Luber plate, number 105. Um, even says it's a uh, soft white anti-wear fortified anti-seize grease prevents rust and corrosion also for hinges locks and latches so well this is a you know locking uh, uh, brake chamber here so hey maybe this is maybe this is the best stuff to use so here's where we're gonna start I'm gonna put put some grease in this area here because uh, that is where the what they call the grommet is so we're going to lubricate that as well you know this is it just slides 
between those two walls and it needs some lubrication so it doesn't start to uh, gall up. We'll put a little on top. Now the next thing is this, um, this is the piston that releases the rollers. Okay, so we get a little coating of grease on that as well. Put that in place. Next thing is what MCI refers to as the collar. It's uh, tapered on the inside here, and um, it, if depending on which way the rollers are pushed. Whether they're pushed up that way, they'll get loose. If they're pushed down that way from the return spring, they uh, lock onto the shaft. So when you put this on, it goes with the, um, the bigger diameter, inner diameter, because it's a bigger diameter on this side than it is on this side. So that goes up. Of course, I go to drop it in and it gets a little, a little bit cocked. But a little tapping and uh, to straighten it out and it falls right in. Now in that M MCI, or not MCI, I'm sorry, Bendix uh, information, it said to put a liberal coating of grease on these rollers. So the rollers, they go in on their side, kind of like a barrel, a barrel on its side, just like that. And then they'll go all the way around. And that is where they sit, just like that. So then what I'm going to do is just put a pretty good coat of or bead of grease around them kind of kind of work it in like you would a tapered wheel bearing you know so it's all around them because that grease in there i think one of the main purposes is to lubricate the parts while they move but also the corrosion protection that it offers. Uh, okay, what next here? Oh, this um, this piece. Uh, okay, wipe my hands here. Whoop! <laughs> That's that old seal. Well, so that seal wasn't really sealing very well uh, if it came apart that easy. And just chip the rest of it out of there and dump it out. I'm going to take this over to the parts washer and give it a, a little bit better bath. Okay, that's much better. That's a lot cleaner. It had a lot of solidified uh, never sees in here, little chunky pieces that needed to get scraped out. So, uh, what goes in next is this seal. And if you can see, there's a little like step on it. And that's where this spring will set, right in there, like that. So that locates the spring. We'll put a little grease. Just a coating to help things go together. And 
and coat the inside of the seal as well and the outside. And then the spring goes on. And then this little cap will go on and twist part way. As a Seems like one of these little tangs isn't holding. Oh, it's a little bit bent. Yeah, these tangs should be about a 90 degree angle in relation to the the uh, the greater part of it. See, there's a one little locating tang here, and I'm trying to see where that goes. I guess, I guess it goes in. They designed it with four notches, probably for some reason. But okay, well anyway, so that's that's on there, and as long as those three little notches are hanging on to these uh, plastic pieces there or the um, the ridge then uh, it'll be okay so the spring holds that seal in place just put a little more grease in there actually it's not a bad thing to really cover up the uh, the spring wire with some grease because uh, that's part of the purpose of the grease is to uh, to keep the moisture off of the metal parts so they don't rust and corrode. I'm going to put this little o-ring right in here. It goes on like that and of course a little grease to lubricate it. Okay. So even though I'm pretty sure, you know, how this will go together, I decided to get out the maintenance manual, the MCI maintenance manual, so I can uh, have something to refer to. I made a copy of the page uh, that I want to use uh, with the exploded view that shows everything that's in there. And uh, this way, you know, it'll, it'll uh, oh, not totally eliminate, but at least reduce the possibility of making a mistake and having to backtrack. Next piece is um, this washer here. Let's see what what does MCI call it? Number fourteen. Yeah, they call it a washer. <laughs> uh, looks like a little piece of crud fell in there. But anyway, so the washer goes on, and the spring pushes against the washer, and then this goes on top of the spring. Now let's make sure that where this that small o-ring is uh, going to engage into is well lubricated so this way we don't roll the o-ring as it goes in. And then this will go in place. Oh, wait a minute. You know, I bet you, okay, so I don't remember seeing anything about this in the, 
in the um, the book, but there's a little hole right here. And if I had to take a guess, I would say that it's supposed to line up with this drain. This is the drain of the chamber, and this is probably also a drain to uh, relieve any moisture that gets in there. Now that's just kind of a guess. Now let me let me look at the let me put you on pause a second here and and look at the literature and, and make sure that I didn't um, miss something, but I don't remember seeing it. Well, it, it, so I looked look through the MCI manual and I did not see uh, any reference to which way that bleed hole should be positioned. I'm going to position it down um, in the case that it is to relieve any uh, moisture buildup, but it could be that it's just a vent hole um, to, you know, keep things from, you know, getting bound up from uh, not being able to breathe. So it could just be a vent or it could be a drain. I'm going to push, position it on the bottom in line with this and um, chances are it probably probably won't matter. So while this can be done by hand, I'm going to put it in the press to, um, to push it down. Oops, I'm going to get rid of this. It's a little too much space. This way it's just a little easier to hold while I put the screws in because the first one of these I took apart, it broke the um, it broke the plastic piece because I didn't realize the tension of the spring under there. And um, and it uh, so I had it with one screw and it, it broke the corner off. I don't know if I can find the screw holes. Oh, there they are. Okay. Okay, so now I can put in the screws. I'm gonna, like anything that takes multiple fasteners, you want to start them all before tightening, it, tightening any one of them. Okay, so that uh, this is what they call the cap, and it's in place. So the next thing we're going to do is flip it over, and all right. So of the two bushings, because I didn't specify to buy a new one, uh, I think this one looks a little better. Just make sure it's going to fit in that. Uh, it's got a it's got a little place in here that it lives in. There's a edge on top and an edge on the bottom to capture this in position. You know, again, I will just put a little grease. Not that the plastic needs it, but it's got um, it's got metal behind it which could corrode, and well, that goes in pretty easy. So. Yeah, because if the metal behind it were to corrode, then it would push in on that bushing and potentially lock the shaft or restrict the, sh the movement of the shaft. So, we have another seal here, and of course we're going to apply some grease to it. Set that in there. That's where that goes. Now we have this kind of stout little, little spring that um, 
Ooh. While I'm here and the grease is here, let me just rub some grease on this. So, you know, it, it kind of keeps some moisture off of it. Anyway, so that goes in here and then it locks into these. There's a little, there's a groove that goes around inside of this area here and this uh, spring. You know what? It uh, doesn't quite see. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. I think I gotta want to just stretch it out a little bit so it so it pushes into that groove a little better. You know, when I'm building transmissions, you know, these snap rings that that go in to hold the clutches and stuff. You know, you don't want them to fit loose. You want them to be in there good and firm, and and that's better because it, you know, I, I couldn't couldn't I could push it around before, and now I can't. So maybe opening up that spring a little bit will be better for the for the long run. Okay, so now we have the what does MCI call this part? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the shaft assembly. Looks like a big mushroom. What? So we're gonna we're gonna grease the whole shaft assembly. Just so it's got a good coat on it and wouldn't hurt to rub a little grease in here as well because um, you know it's just metal that's exposed and it's already got a little surface rust so we're, we're going to uh, just give it a coat now the um, The shaft assembly should push in and it should go through. Unless if I have it backwards. Uh, I don't think I. Oh, well, yeah. Good reason here. Um, We need to have the spring in place, which again, the spring will get some grease on it. I think I'm going to have to take apart the other brake can because I didn't use this much grease on everything. I'm sure it'll work fine for a long time, but I like to be thorough. Okay, so that goes there. And we have a hole in the bench. Over on that other side there that uh, we're going to position this over. Or better yet, instead of that. Hole in the bench would be good, but uh, that seems to work right there. So that kind of props it up. Hopefully, it's deep enough. Boy, <laughs> now that this piston's greasy. Well, there it goes. So now it locks in. So that's so now it won't unlock unless I apply air over to this port. Then that'll push that piston up and um, allow those rollers to unlock off of the shaft. So 
So we're getting there. Uh, next thing goes the primary chamber. Or the primary diaphragm. Okay, so here's the primary diaphragm. And I'm just going to give it a coat of um, Armorall. Um, hopefully that'll prevent sticking uh, to um, to the piston and, and to the other um, to the secondary diaphragm. Next part that goes on is this one. Oh, oh you know what? That's one thing I forgot to do is I was going to uh, stamp these or take the whiz wheel, uh, the die grinder, and just make a little mark in it. But luckily, my paint marks stayed in place. And. The last one I did, I when I put it together, it, it leaked a little bit out of the seam. I put some armor all on it, and that helped the rubber to, uh, I guess, better conform. Okay, so we want that there. And now we're going to put on a clamp. And so I made a dot here and here. So that's where the clamp is going to line up. Not that difficult to put on, but just trying to there we go. All right, so we're gonna line that up and line up those two lines. And uh, put in the nuts and bolts here. So the uh, bolts uh, aren't quite long enough, and it's kind of tough to put uh, squeeze them together by hand. So I'm going to use a little pair of vice um, vice grip clamps here. And that should get things to start. And uh, get the other one going too. Okay. So we're going to tighten this up a little bit. Ice grips out. Want to make sure that clamp's going on evenly. Looks like it's a little more. Looks okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put some armor all on the top. That might be a little excessive. And eh, I'll kind of dab off the excess, but you know, just something that helps the two slide together so they don't stick. And 
and then that one goes on and oh good I still have a paint mark there so we'll line that up with the other one oh, get the top of this Now, I don't know if it's a good idea or a not so good idea with the armor all, but so far I can't see why it's a bad idea. So these marks, these dots were made um, so this, these clamps can be positioned where they're not going to interfere because where it was before um, was, um, it was touching one of the shocks. Push here. Oh, that's nine sixteenths. Tap it around to try and get it so it seats in the center. From the um, the manual I read, it said to tighten these. Um, I forget the term they used, it wasn't snug, but it was tight enough that they don't leak. And if they leak, tighten it more, but just enough till it stops leaking. Now this gun is set on medium, so it's not um, putting out a lot of force. It's a 3.8 gun, although it's a powerful 3.8 gun, it is set on medium where there's more control. And so this is, uh, well, that, that side of it is together. And now the next thing to do is choose the better felt here, which this, it looks like that one. Um, I accidentally ordered this. I didn't mean to, but I did. And I guess I'll I'll use it. I'll save this old one just in case. I uh, what I'd like to do is pick up a spare or a couple spare DD3 chambers. I mean, somebody should be parting out an MCI bus somewhere, and uh, might be willing to let the chambers go for cheap and then just rebuild them. And. Uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm just going to put the old one back in. I'll, I'll save, either save or return the new one. There's a couple pieces here that I don't, don't plan on using. So, All right, so that's going to go there. And then we have the two studs. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to... that gasket off and 
Now those studs don't have to be, they don't have to be really tight, but I, you know, I, I imagine they're similar to you know, gripping them down here. It's going to, it's not going to be in an area where the nut's going to reach. So if it, yeah, I know I should put two nuts on there and, and tighten it, but I don't really feel like taking the time because it doesn't matter if the threads, a couple of the threads down here have some nicks in them. Um, but like on a, on an engine, if you use uh, studs for the cylinder head, they say you don't have to tighten the studs. You just thread them in by hand and that's all they need because they're going to grip on the threads. And, um, oh, pardon me one second. Okay, uh, before the phone rang, uh, we were talking about uh, studs going into cylinder, um, to hold cylinder heads on an engine. They say you just need to tighten them, and then when you torque down, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be fine. They don't, they don't have to be, like, really tightened into the, um, the chamber itself. But you want to make sure that they are fully engaged, which is why I put the pliers on them. Okay, so now the next step is... Uh, matter of fact, we're going to put a little bit of um, armor all inside the boot as well. You know, I mean, I'm hoping it's, you know, that's what, uh, is going to help keep the rubber in good shape. Well, okay, so that spring that... so that spring that holds that seal in place here, um, apparently this, this backing plate's gonna go down. Well, maybe it won't. Well, I thought it got on top of it, but... Alright, anyway, um... So this will go on this, uh, boot and it appears like it should go around all this stuff here. Yeah, there we go. So just squish it on over where that cap is. And then we'll get this to go all the way down there. It's that's where it is. Okay, that's uh, that's it. And then the last thing is putting on the uh, the nut. And I call this a yoke. Let's see, what do they call it? Forty-one. Uh, oh wait a minute. Oh, they do call it a yoke. Oh, good. At least my terminology carried over. Um, Okay, so we'll put that on. I'll hold it with the pliers. It's got a little burr or something giving it resistance. But we'll push the boot down as far as we can get it. Put the pliers down here. Oops, let me get those to the right size. Okay. Put it back to about where it was, which was having just a little bit, you know, a little bit beyond full engagement. So, yeah, right about like that there. And then we'll come back up with the nut. And then once it gets in place, we'll snug the nut down. So this way the, the push rod doesn't turn and eventually unscrew itself and cause a problem. I don't think it would get that far, but um, but yeah, it needs to be tight. So that's it. Uh, no, it's not. Wait a minute. But wait, there's more. <laughs> this um, 
this little piece. It's um, the little vent here. Now I hope I can get that screw out of there. Let's see. Oh, yep, yeah, there it goes. Wow, I'm pretty surprised. What luck, because I didn't do it before and I got the camera running. You know, it's that's that's uh, that's when something doesn't go to plan. That little uh, vent. There. Okay. Now, oh, if I keep dropping stuff, or if I can stop dropping stuff. Uh, anyway, so now this is uh, this is all done and ready to be installed in the bus. All right, let's go. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Now let's. Uh, you know what? While while we're here, let's. Uh, Let's hook up the, the special tool. Okay. All right, let's see what happens. Whoa, did you see that? <laughs> see that spring retract? All right. So there's air in there. So the thing is loose. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna take that back. And we'll put air into the primary side. And uh, you know what? I might not have enough air in there. That leak. Well, that leak we hear is the fitting isn't tight enough. And uh, let me see. Let me grab a wrench. Okay. So now we're going to actually really test it here. So okay, we've got. Uh, this is regulated. At uh, actually 110. It's regulated at 110. And so this, this is the service side. Yeah, so that uh, that's the service side. And here's the secondary or emergency side. So if your diaphragm on the primary side went, this uh, emergency diaphragm will, uh, it should kick in, and I believe that happens in the inversion valve. Um, I could be wrong. I, I, I got to admit, I need to do a little more studying of, of how the uh, air system works. I, I read over it a couple times, um, but apparently not thoroughly enough. But um, uh, but either way, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's working. And so if we take air away from the unlock part, now when we put air into, this won't come back. It stays in the locked position until you apply air to release those rollers that lock the shaft. Which, let me turn the valve off and apply a little air, and there it goes, right, right back down. So I think we're in good shape to be able to install the rebuilt DD3 chamber into the bus. Uh, 
and it's only uh, 1020 right now so I think there's time time to do that so all right let's uh, let's head over to the bus all right so I got my new hardware set out and here we go Put a lock washer and a new nut. Okay, let me hit the other side. There we go. You gotta be a contortionist to get to some of this stuff. All right, that's started. And it looks like the clamps and the hose connections are all where they should be. Whew. All right, let's uh, let's tighten down the, the nuts. It's pretty well seated. We're gonna put a long ratchet on there. I want to get a feel for what it. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. And let's see if I can turn this one. All right, that's pretty tight. and we'll hook up some hoses. Okay, so the DD3 is installed and the lines are hooked up so let's uh plug in the bus for air and uh see what happens i have an air hose for my shop air compressor going through a regulator regulated at 110 and so that's going to fill this chamber, uh, they call this one the wet tank. I guess it's the first one um, off the compressor. And so everything's uh, installed and tight. And I, I had to go back because I, I forgot to put the clevis pin through the yoke and the. Uh, um, so I had to backtrack a little bit and, and get that uh, put on there. So in a minute, I'm going to go step on the brake in the bus. So I'm in the driver's seat of the bus. And it looks like it, it, it's actually regulated at um, about 120 for the uh, for the air that I have going. So let's uh, see if we hear any air noise when I step on the brake. Well, I hear a little bit. So I guess I might have to tighten those uh, clamps a little bit or, you know, or it could be coming out of somewhere else. I'll have to um, when I have somebody with me, um, um, have them step on the brake while I'm underneath looking for any air leaks. So anyway, well, for the moment, that's it. And, uh, um, yeah, we're going to look for some air leaks and, uh, and then move to the next step and hopefully this will be done. 
All right. Okay, so here's the DD3 chamber installed, and my friend Todd is going to step on the brake, the service brake, so we can hear where the leak is, because I could hear a leak last night. Ready? Yep. It's actually... Got a little leak around the first one that I did. So I'm gonna take that back off. All right, go ahead, let it go. So I'm gonna take that back off and um, find out where the leak is and also add some grease. I'd like to put a little more grease on, on the moving components inside. Anyway, I think, uh, I think this, this part of the bus is gonna be done.